Welcome! It's your first book of the year. I hope you're excited. This is one of my favorite books to teach, and it's one that students consistently comment on at the end of the year as being one of their favorites, which says something for the book because we always read it at the very beginning of the year, and if they still remember it in May, that's, that's a pretty good deal for this book. It's one that will definitely stretch your way of thinking and will hopefully enlighten your mind to some of the freedoms that we enjoy in this country that uh, you might take for granted a little bit. Before you start reading Anthem, I wanted to give you a little bit of a background on some of the major ideas and themes that will show up in the book so that you have an idea of kind of the context for where the book is being set, since there are some pretty extreme ideas in here. The first thing that I want you to make sure you understand is this idea of a utopia. You know, utopia is a word that actually comes from a book that was written way back forever ago by a guy by the name of Sir Thomas More. He was an English priest who wrote a book about basically kind of a perfect society and what it contained, how people lived, uh, the food they ate, the lifestyles they had, uh, how families were organized, how marriages happened, all that kind of stuff. His idea on how you could have a perfect society that was void of fighting, void of any kinds of wars, any kinds of monetary disputes, anything that made life not perfect, basically. Um, when, when I present the idea of utopia to a class, we generally talk about how, yeah, it would be really nice to live in a world without cancer. Uh, it'd be really great if you didn't have to fear uh, for your life when you got onto an airplane or went into an airport. It would be nice if you could just live in a world where you first felt safe all the time and knew you could trust everybody and you didn't have to worry about strangers and all that kind of stuff. Fires, anything that's kind of bad. No poverty, no disease, all that. Um, but how to make that happen is a little bit of a conflict. In fact, if you ever read Utopia by Thomas More, he has some really great ideas, but he also has some in there that are kind of uncomfortable, at least for me, where I go, okay, well, that's nice, but but what about freedom of choice? And, and what about the benefits of of having light and dark in this world, like doesn't doesn't having dark in this world make it easier to see the light? And and I, I just, I really like the freedom of choice because in order to make this utopia happen, you have to set specific boundaries. So, so Thomas More's idea is nice, but it makes people a little bit uncomfortable because it is kind of extreme. So as a result, people started writing books called, that are, that are kind of labeled dystopian novels. That means that they present a community that seems perfect or seems ideal or seems like it could be wonderful, but it actually isn't. You start seeing kind of the darker side of the community and start seeing the benefit of having a little bit of diverse thought. Um, if you've ever read The Giver, then that would be a prime example, or uh, The Hunger Games to an extent is kind of like that, though Giver is probably a better uh, representation because nobody really likes the community in The Hunger Games from the beginning, but Giver they do. So if you read a book like The Giver, you know that that's a, that's a community that is set up to sound perfect and sound great, but you start finding out there's actually some stuff in there that's not so awesome. Um, and that's kind of the setup for Anthem by Anne Rand. Anne Rand herself, as a writer, was born in Russia in the early 1900s, but she ended up moving to the United States in the 1920s. Now, you have to understand that Russia, following the Russian Revolution in the early 1900s, um, back when the Romanov family was killed and Rasputin was around, there's some pretty great stories there if you don't know them that you can look up, uh, entered into this nice form of government that was a little bit socialistic, a little bit communistic, um, pretty extreme, and it wasn't... Um, it wasn't as nice as they all thought it was going to be. It led to a really, really dark time for Russia for a very, very long time. So when Anne Rand left Russia, she moves to the United States in the early 1920s that you'll read about in a couple of, um, couple of packets. That, um, and she starts seeing kind of the seeds of communism being sown into the American government. And it makes her really nervous. Those of you who read Animal Farm last year, um, or not last year, but in the last um, section of Vigilance, um, know that George Orwell went through something somewhat similar, where both of them saw this happening in the government and just kind of went, wait, this isn't... This isn't right. This isn't what you actually want. So Anthem, then, is a book that's written with a little bit of an extreme mindset. A lot of the things that happen in here are are very, very, very extreme and exaggerated to kind of shock the public and wake them up into seeing the reality that's going on in their world that's not as extreme, but is heading down that path or could potentially head down that path. So it's meant to make you uncomfortable and meant to make you think as a result about how these extreme ideas are represented less extremely in your world. Um, I want you, as you read through this book then, to not take everything quite so literally and be like, oh, this will never happen. You have to look at this and go, wait, how does this happen on a smaller scale in my life? 
and what can I do to prevent that or to encourage it if it's something that you enjoy. The other thing that I want you to watch in this book is kind of the ebb and flow of this idea of individuality. All of the people in the community that we are going to read about in Anthem have names that are delineated by some kind of phrase like liberty or equality, and then it's followed by some numbers. So there's a lot of individuality that's taken out of the people in this community. Your main character, Equality, will start going through um, a chain of events that will help lead him to discover a little bit more how individuality is a good thing because he's been so ingrained in this idea of group mentality and then he goes into an individual stance but as you watch the ebb and flow of this you'll notice that he starts at one extreme and ends kind of on a different extreme so the goal with this book is a great setup as we start going into this theme for the year of who are you is trying to find a balance between where he is at the beginning of the book and where he is at the end of the book and how you as an individual can find the best ways to to help your community and to help yourself uh, without sacrificing one or the other. You don't want to give up the ideas of community, but you don't want to do so much for your community that you forget to function in a way that blesses your own life and all that kind of stuff is kind of what we'd like to talk about most with this book. That's where most of our discussions will go. So as you dive into this book, consider what it means to be an individual and how do you obtain individuality? What is what's the benefit of becoming an individual? When should you help the group? When should you help yourself? Um, what kinds of diversity are good for a community? What kinds of diversity are harmful for a community or harmful for individuals? This is all kind of very basic discussion stuff that will be really good as we dive into some of the harder books that we'll read this year. I hope that you enjoy reading this book. The first little bit takes a, a little bit to get used to in terms of style, so I will help by reading the first part of the chapter with you. You're welcome to read along and get a little bit of an idea of some of the thoughts and um, ideas that I have as I read through this book with you and help you annotate it so that you can be ready for your first test because it's coming up so fast. Anyway, go start reading and make sure that you read the book along with the discussion boards so that you are in the right mindset when you start responding. And if you have any questions, be sure to send them my way.